previous form that we learnt was the third form. We've learnt general form, we've learnt, uh, this is general form, we've learnt slope intercept form, and then most recently we learnt point gradient. Now, the point gradient form, what does it look like? I'll give you a clue. It starts with y minus. Y1. So y minus a y coordinate equals m outside of Fantastic. So you can see why it's called point gradient form. There's a point. There's a gradient. You're done. Okay? If you've got a point gradient, you've got your point Okay? You guys right? <laughs> Me? Not him. Really? Really? Oh. <laughs> Jacob is the Okay, alright, we keep going. Here's point gradient form. Now, the nice thing about point gradient is it really easily transitions into this form just with a single step. Gradient. Gradient? We know a formula for gradient, don't we? In fact, we knew a formula for gradient ages ago before we even started talking about these equations. What is the formula for gradient? Brian. Okay, now I can say rise over one, but there's a whole bunch of x and y stuff that helps me calculate rise over one. Ari, what would you put in? Uh, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, excellent. That's m, right? Now, all of this other stuff is still hanging around, around the outsides, like this. Do you agree? This is still a line. It's the same line, in fact. It's just that instead of writing m, in a short form, I've written M in a long form with all the bits and pieces that have gone into it. Okay. Now, have a look at this. I can do one little action to make this a nice symmetrical thing that is this, and we'll talk about why it is. I'm going to divide both sides by this guy, this guy here. So see how there are Y's over here? I'm going to get the rest of the Y's over on this side by dividing everything through by Y2 minus Y1. So there's y2 minus y1 over there. What does that leave me with on the right hand side? The denominator here hasn't changed. Do you agree with that? No change? This x minus x1 you're multiplying by, right? I guess that guy can go up the top. Now, have a look at that and put a nice big box around it. This is called 2.4. Why is it called 2.4? Right. Genius. If you have an x1, y1, that's a single point. You can put it here, 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 and here. If you have an x2 and a y2, that's another point, and you would put it here and here. And it will just supply the equation for you in exactly the same way the point gradient form did. Uh, and also, it's really nice because look how symmetrical everything is. You've got all the y's together, you've got all the x's together, um, you've got the same sign everywhere, which is better than like, the distance formula. Uh, it's quite easy to look at and say, oh, that sort of makes sense. Now, because you've learned so many other forms, at the moment, it's like, okay, my brain's a bit maxing out on all these forms right now. That's okay. As you work with it, you'll become quite comfortable with it, I promise. So, do you see it there? I'm looking at uh, this one here. 1a. So I want to find this equation. Okay. Now, like I said, every form that you've got gives you a new way to be able to work out what the equation of this line is. But I want to test this one out. Okay. I'm going to give this a go. All I need is two points that are on this line. Any two points. Okay. So I want someone to call out what's a point that they can see which is on the red line. Can you give me coordinates? Anyone? Five, zero, five. Zero, five. Okay, zero, comma, five. So that is the y-intercept. That's nice and easy. So let's call this one zero, comma, five. Okay, so this is going to be our x1, y1. For our x2, y2, again, you can pick any point you like on the line. Now, being that you chose this one up here, which was the y-intercept, it's a natural next step to say, oh, how about the x-intercept? Now, that looks kind of like... Maybe minus two and a half, but I'm not 100% sure. Maybe it's just like a little bit off and I can't really tell. So I want you to look at the rest of the line. Is there any coordinates that you definitely know, just like this line, that you pass through? Someone want to give me a, an example? Yeah, Isabel. Negative two. <laughs> Negative two comma one. 
I think that works. Negative two comma one. That's gonna be our second point, okay? So I'm gonna have a go at substituting everything into this long form and seeing what happens. Okay? Let's have a shot. I'm gonna begin by writing y minus, and then I see the first thing is a y1. Have a look, which number is that that we picked? Pretty sure it's the five there, right? That's y1. So I'm gonna write minus five. Now as soon as I do that, this is something that I've just learned to do practically because I think it will help you do this faster. See how you've got minus y1 and minus y1 again, right? So since I've written minus five, I'm just gonna write minus five again, right? Just while that number is still in my head so I don't confuse it with the other numbers. What's left on this side? Have a look. Look. Is it not one? One. Ta-da. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just reading off the coordinates and putting them into the right spots. Okay. So now I'll say equals. On the right hand side, I've got the same deal. I'm going to go x minus, what's the x1 coordinate? That's convenient. So seeing as I write minus 0 here, I'm going to write minus 0 here as well. Do you see why? You see how it's happening on the top and the bottom? So I've got the same number twice. The last number, the only number I haven't used yet is... Okay. Um, now I'm pretty much there, I just need to simplify this thing. Okay. So I've got y minus 5 divided by what? That's ne negative 4. Okay. Uh, you just got an x on the top there and negative 2. Okay. What would you like me to do now? I think I'm going to cross multiply. Right? That doesn't have to be the only thing I can do, but it's going to be pretty simple. Right? So I'm going to multiply everything over here by minus 2. That gives me that. Are you okay with that? And then I'm going to multiply everything over here by minus 4. That gives me that. Okay? What do you think? Now from here, uh, I can't remember what the question says, but I'm going to put this in both of the normal, the most common forms I get, which are general form and slope-intercept uh, slope form, right? I only have to do one thing to get into general form. What do I do? Just move everything over. That's a general form. Excellent. But it might be more useful to me to check if I'm right by seeing if I can get it into not general form, but slope intercept form, right? So I'm going to do this. Do you see why I'm subtracting 10 from both sides? Why is that useful? I'm trying to get this into y equals mx plus b. Yeah. So it gets me one step closer to just having y on its own. Now I'm going to divide through by negative 2. What happens when you divide that by negative 2? 2. What happens when you divide that by negative 2? Now I can use this to confirm whether I got it right. Does that look like y equals 2x plus 5? The 5 is the? Which we told you told me right at the beginning. And the 2 that's attached to x is the? Gradient. Is it 2? Yes. You go across 1, go up 2. Go across 1, go up 2. Perfect. Okay. So if you have any two points on the line, like these guys, you can put them in and out everything falls. Okay. 